produced with exclusive support from Bavarian Nordic and Dendrion. Throughout our lives, the cells in our body grow and divide. But when cells start dividing and spreading uncontrollably, they become cancerous. There are more than 200 different types of cancer, and scientists are continually developing and testing new ways to treat them. Most cancer therapies involve drugs designed to kill the rapidly dividing cells. This is what chemotherapy does. But there is a different approach called immunotherapy. Immunotherapy uses the body's own immune system to fight cancer. This involves activating immune cells and getting them to recognize the cancer tissue as different from normal body cells. This isn't easy, but recently the field has had some success. The FDA has approved several new drugs, and with more drugs in clinical trials, some say we are entering a new era of anti-cancer immunotherapy. The idea goes back to the late 19th century to an American surgeon named William Coley. He injected bacteria into tumours and watched them shrink. The bacteria, it seemed, were provoking an immune response. But our immune system is highly complex and for most of the 20th century, scientists struggled to turn Coley's observations into effective cancer treatments. But after decades of learning about the immune system, a variety of immunotherapies are finally making their way to the clinic. We can divide them into four general strategies. Non-specific immune stimulation, adoptive cell transfer, immune checkpoint blockade, and vaccination strategies. The first, non-specific immune stimulation, is used to give a general boost to the immune system in vivo. To do this, some of the many cells that make up the immune system, such as these antigen-presenting cells, need to be activated. Researchers can do this by injecting molecules that bind to receptors in the cell membrane. The activated cells then alert other immune cells, such as these T cells. T cells are the main players in the fight against cancer. When activated, they can attack and kill tumour cells. For full activation, small cell signalling molecules called cytokines are needed. Two cytokines, interferon alpha and interleukin-2, have been developed as drugs and approved for use against some forms of cancer, including melanoma. Another way to stimulate immune cells in vivo is to inject bacteria, like William Coley did. This has led to a rather surprising use of the BCG vaccine. BCG is normally given to children as protection against tuberculosis, but scientists have found that the weakened bacteria in the vaccine can also help patients with bladder cancer. The bacteria appear to cause inflammation, which increases the number of immune cells around the cancer, helping them to home in on their target. Non-specific immunity can also be achieved by removing so-called immune checkpoint blockades. These blockades normally dampen down the immune response to prevent collateral damage to healthy tissue. But to fight cancer, scientists need to remove some of these blockades to make the immune response stronger. The antibody ipilimumab, also known as Yervoy, targets a blockade molecule called CTLA-4. It got FDA approval for patients with advanced stage melanoma in summer 2011 and it's being tested for several other types of cancer. Activating immune cells inside the body can be difficult, but the next strategy, adoptive cell transfer, combats this by extracting the immune cells from the patient and activating them outside the body. It enables researchers to specifically target the cancer tissue. One approach is to take immune cells directly from the tumour. It's difficult to extract enough cells, but the advantage is that the cells have already learnt to recognise the tumour. Taking cells from the blood is much easier, but then you've got to use genetic engineering to arm them with tumour-specific receptors. 
Either way, the cells are activated using cytokines and then multiplied in petri dishes before being reintroduced to the patient. At the moment, this approach is experimental. The fourth strategy uses vaccinations. Unlike the BCG vaccine that we mentioned earlier and which targets the immune system in a general way, these vaccines are used to direct immune cells very specifically to the cancer tissue. Several viral vaccines have shown promising results in clinical trials. For example, a weakened version of the herpes simplex virus, modified to produce an immune stimulating factor, is being developed for melanoma and head and neck cancer. It's also possible to vaccinate with a patient's own tumour cells. Some cells are extracted, irradiated to stop them from spreading and then engineered to secrete activating growth factors. When the cells are injected back into the patient, the growth factors alert the immune system to the cancer. But it's also possible to vaccinate with a person's own immune cells. For example, antigen presenting cells can be taken from patients, matured outside the body and loaded with tumour antigen. When the cells are reintroduced to the patient, the antigen stimulates other immune cells and helps them to recognise the tumour. The first vaccine of this type received FDA approval in 2010 for the treatment of some prostate cancers. It's known as Provenge or Cell T. The other vaccination approaches are still experimental. The last few years have seen many promising developments in anti-cancer immunotherapies, but there's still much work to do. To help get drugs from the bench, through clinical trials and to the bedside, scientists need to find better ways to judge the success of immunotherapies in patients and to work out the best dose. Right now, it's difficult to predict who might respond to a particular treatment and some responses are only short-lived. If these hurdles can be overcome, then many more cancer patients could benefit from strategies that boost their immune system. Produced with exclusive support from Bavarian Nordic and Dendrion.